thrilled when an X-Wing fighter flew across the screen in Star Wars, then you've come under the spell of special effects pioneer John Dykstra. He and his compatriots at George Lucas's fledgling Industrial Light and Magic used motion control computers to operate the camera for the filming of miniature spacecraft and planets. We mounted the camera in a way that allowed us to add motion, and I think really that was the key difference between Star Wars and its visual effects and uh, the, uh, its forebearers, was that the camera constantly moved. It was a very crazy group trying to do something that had never been done before. Uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of talent, but not very much experience. John seemed to have the biggest vision about how we could accomplish what it is I was after, which is primarily to do motion control blue screen, which seemed like a very good idea to me and, and doable. Dykstra's work on Star Wars earned him an Academy Award and the distinction in Hollywood as the father of modern motion control. Dykstra's start came in 1970, when he got his first effects job working for Douglas Trumbull, visual effects supervisor of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Together, they created effects for Star Trek The Motion Picture and Trumbull's own Silent Running. In the early 1970s, Dykstra took a leave of absence from Hollywood. I was working with Doug Trumbull and the opportunity came to work for this group called the Institute of Urban and Regional Development in Berkeley. The Institute sought to simulate urban traffic patterns on a miniature scale. A model of Marin County, California was constructed and a camera fitted with a small periscope-like device called a snorkel lens was moved through the street simulating the viewpoint of a car. The moves were programmed into a computer which operated motors on a camera motion rig. It was a tedious process, for the system could only move very slowly, limited by the simple computers of the time. But Dykstra's motion control cityscape became the foundation for the next giant leap in motion control photography, a little film about a galaxy far, far away. The hardest part, I think, of producing the images for Star Wars was taking out the consistent smoothness that motion control, at that time anyway, built in. To give the computer-controlled camera footage a more realistic documentary feel, the effects team input directives that intentionally produced uneven moves and off-centered framing. This helped create the illusion that a cameraman in space had actually filmed the battle scenes, struggling to stay focused on the thrilling action around him. John Dykstra has gone on to create visual effects for such features as Firefox and Batman 3. But the cinematic impact may never be greater than when a small model spaceship, photographed with Dykstra's motion control camera, rumbled over our heads and changed the landscape of movies forever.